You, you don't understand how f fine that is. Today, I'm going to be coding the decimal multiplier. Some of you might think, oh, you idiot, you've done that already and you messed up completely. Well, the last week's video hasn't come out yet. I've had a bit of a sleep, a long shower. I cried a lot, but I think I figured it out. So let me try it. Decimal doubler. There we go. So last time <laughs> I failed miserably right? This code basically doesn't work because I couldn't figure it out at all. Our goal here is to take this number, which is 1, and double it and give it to someone else. Oh, still the same jokes. Idiot. Anyway, we're supposed to take the number and double it. Then press this button, display the number, double it again, press the button again, and so on. So we need to create this sequence of numbers until we reach at least eight and a half million. What do you mean at least? We can't do anything after that because that's going to be 16 million and we don't have that many spaces, uh, spots, bits. Anyway, last time I just wrote down the sequence of numbers and tried to figure out a sequence for this first person, the second person and so on. And the first person is pretty easy. That's one, two, four, eight, six, two, four, eight, six, two, four, eight, six and so on. So we could just hard code a sequence, no problem. The issue is with the next person, because there is basically no sequence or no short and easy one. Also, we have to deal with overflows. So if you take a look at these two numbers, that's 16. So this person has six, this person has one, and then we need to multiply it by two and get 32. Six times two is 12, minus 10 is two, easy but we somehow need to figure out how to tell the next person that there has been an overflow. So the next person takes the one times two is two, plus the one is three, simple as that. And I just couldn't realize that last time and I was looking at sequences, because for the second person that's like 16, 32, 64, one, two, eight. So the sequence is one, three, six, two, then we've got five, one, two, four, nine, nine, and you know, we're screwed. But that was me being an idiot. So, clean slate. There's nothing here happening anyway. Should I just delete this? Yeah, screw it. Reset. Now, what I figured out is just part of the solution. And we need to figure out how the people are actually going to communicate the overflows. You could say only nudge the person, you know, he's going to be listening and you tell them when there's been an overflow. But sometimes you need them to multiply that number as well and then overflow so they have to be active not just waiting until you tell them also we need to somehow trigger this button person and tell them when to press the button now which of these people should tell them how how would that work we don't know whether the people are still waiting to be told that there's been overflow or whether they're calculating on what the shit are they doing so i thought each person could look at the number of the other person and figure out whether there's gonna be an overflow or not. But then I was like, okay, so if everyone looks at the same time, then multiplies their number, adds the overflow, what if the overflow is gonna make them overflow again? The next person wouldn't count on that. But then I realized I'm an idiot, and I think this doesn't happen ever, does it? There are no, like, it can never happen. You can only have one overflow, and that overflow is not gonna trigger another overflow since we're multiplying by two, right? I hope we're gonna see, but if we had like 99, nine times two is eight, and there's an overflow here, nine times two is eight, I mean 18, obviously, plus the one from the overflow is nine, and you can't overflow this twice. So when this person looked at this nine, he learned that there was an overflow, so he's counting on that, but there's only gonna be one. Easy. That's the beauty of multiplying by two. Anyway, let's try that. And I think that's the way this is gonna work. And this person, no telling, no listening, this person is somehow just gonna waste a bunch of time before pressing the button. So we somehow need to synchronize all these people, right? Cool. So everyone, pick up your data cubes. Step down twice. Why twice? So these people are on the sensors. This person presses the button. Oh, hang on, that's not gonna work, is it? Oh no, wait, 
this person tries to pick up a data cube, he's gonna complain, and these people have enough time to drop their data cubes, because the button only senses whatever is on the sensors. So if they're holding the cubes, it doesn't count. So now we should have one displayed, drop the cubes, press one. Awesome. Now, if uh, you are standing on a button, you're gonna waste a bunch of time. Don't worry about it just yet. But we're gonna have a loop here and some time wasting, you know, steps or counts or whatever. And then they press the button and that should give these people enough time to do whatever they need to do. But also it has to be quick because these people are just gonna be going for it again. Or we might have them listen for this person to press the button. We'll see in a while. Anyway, these people are on these sensors with their cubes. Now what you need to do is calculate in memory one, it's gonna be the overflow, right? So we're gonna calculate whatever is the item to the right of you times two. And if in memory one, the item is larger than nine, that means there has been an overflow, right? So in this case, six times two is 12, larger than nine, overflow. And that's all you need to know. So that's when you set memory one to one. We could either treat it as a Boolean, so true, yes, there has been an overflow, or eventually I just figured out we could add this number, right? Because we're gonna add one when there has been an overflow and otherwise set it to zero. So false, no overflow, but also we could write a generic code and add this number whenever so worst case, we add a zero, which is fine. So now we know whether there's been an overflow or not. And I'm hoping this first person is gonna calculate this number and see it as a zero, hopefully. What you need to do then is in memory two, calculate your number and times it by two. Then you need to add one to that, or I mean the overflow, so plus memory one. So in memory one, we have the overflow. Memory two is your number times two. And with the overflow edit, you can simply pick up the data cube, write whatever's in memory two, that's the result, and drop it again, I think. And for these people, they're just gonna write zero. That's completely fine. You, you don't understand how fucking fine that is. And I couldn't, you know, figure it out because I thought that at some point they're going to have to introduce a number. No, just introduce the number when there's an overflow. So keep multiplying your fucking zeros by two. But sometimes you're going to add a one to that. And that's when it takes off. These people are going to be writing zeros for a bit, which is OK, since we want them to be synchronized anyway. So we need these steps to be, you know, all these people have to have the same number of steps. So once they've dropped the cubes, I think they can just jump back to here and keep going again. And we just need to, let, let, let's see what's gonna happen, right? We don't care about the button person for now. Zero times two is zero. Sorry, what the shit? That took a while. Sorry, I'm just gonna run it again because I wasn't sure what this person was doing. So. Now, memory one is gonna be, yes, look, zero times two, that's the person next to, so no overflow for sure. Yeah, memory one is zero, great. And memory two is one times two is two, great. And also I forgot that if we calculate something that's actually higher than 10, we can't write it on the data cube. So here, if memory two is again larger than nine, so there has been an overflow, we need to subtract, um, that's gonna be memory two, memory two minus 10, right? So in this case, we've got six times two is 12. We need to subtract 10 to get two. And that should be this. Oh, but we need some time wasting as well. So else, so that they're all in sync. So let's put an else branch here. Memory two, calculate memory two plus zero, or I wanted to do times one. Let's do plus zero. No, let's do times one actually. <laughs> 
there. So as I said, all need to have the same number of commands, same type of commands. So when some people are calculating their overflows, the other who don't have any need to also calculate whatever, just to waste time. Now let's speed this up because it's going to work. So we should have 2, 4, 8, then 16. Awesome. 32, 64. I mean, fuck me, it works. I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah, 248, 496. Oh, fuck shit. I'm so happy. I was such an idiot last time. I mean, I couldn't just figure this out, you know, because I was... That, that's the thing. I, I just couldn't think about it properly. I just focused on finding some sequences of numbers. I could hard code there and there aren't any. Anyway, now for this person to waste a bunch of time. So how many calculations or steps do we have? We've got one, two, no, that's just set, two, three, four calculations. This is going to take a long time. And I don't know what the optional challenges are, so how long we actually need it to take. But we've got four calculations, pick up, write, drop, and one set. So for sure, uh, this person should step off the button, and I don't know how long a step is. Then let's just do freaking four calculations. Uh, let's do uh, memory one, or whatever, plus one, and we're gonna count the number of steps, it's gonna be fun. So four calculations, then pick up, write, drop. So this person can't actually pick up, write or drop. So we need to waste time somehow. Let's try doing an additional calculation, all right? Because they really do take a long time to complete. And then step down and we'll see whether this is enough for the synchronization. So these people have started, nothing to drop. Oh, they try dropping as well. So we've got some calculations going. This person is already behind. Right, put down, and that's it. So what I think this drop statement could be probably here, and we don't need this drop statement in that case. So let's see how fast this is. Yeah, calculating at the same time, basically. They write, drop, and oh, that was really close. Let's see, is it gonna work? Four, no, zero. They messed up again. So let's put the drop. No, 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 no. You know what? Let's just make an extra step. So two steps extra and that might be enough. Hopefully. Let's see. So speed it up again. Two, four, eight, 16. I just feel that there's a slight difference and that these people are at some point going to be a little faster and you know, they're out of sync and I feel like the gap is getting larger and larger and at some point they're gonna skip a number. You know what? Don't give a shit. Look at that. See you later. All right. Oh, a smiley face. Now, let's see the optional challenges. Come on. 29, all right. Oh, shit. <laughs> 257 seconds. So I think that's due to some time wasting in this area, actually. And then we need to shave off a couple commands. I mean, this is possible. I'm just so happy I was able to do this. I don't give a shit about the optional challenges. Okay, that's a lie. You know I do. I love the optional challenges and I'm a freaking completionist. Like, I don't think there's ever been a game I haven't fully completed. And, you know, just might have skipped a couple of achievements, but later, a few years later, I'm just getting back to those games and completing the achievements. Anyway, what if we do a diagonal step? Is it faster? It doesn't really... Oh, might be actually slower than this one. Let's see. So we're gonna step diagonally. Now, two, four, eight. And at some point, yeah, zero. All right, so messed up already. So that's still too fast. This person is still too fast. What if instead of these calculations... So four calculations is correct. Can we have the person just complain a little? So instead of pick up, write and drop, we're gonna complain. So let's make the person pick up a data cube and complain there's no data cube to pick up. Oh no, zero already. Let's try again, I didn't see that. Place down the cubes, one. Calculate, calculate, then again, and once more. And now complain, they're gonna, yeah, that was too fast. So what if we remove another calculations and have three picks up, and, okay, you know what? This is, this is uh, 
turning into some kind of bullshit. So let me put this back. And I think I had two steps right and that worked. So just to be sure, zero, two, no, it doesn't work. So I had five calculations, right? A zero, what you mean? What? One, two, four, zero, shit. Zero, zero, 32. Whoa, whoa, oh shit. What was the original solution? Oh, did I have two steps along with the five calculations, please? Let me figure it out again. Four, eight. Yeah, yeah. I think this is it. Okay. So now I shouldn't be an idiot and I should actually copy this code so that I don't lose it and edit it here. Right. Cool. So two steps. Remove that. Remove this. Remove that. And let's try three pickups. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. It works. It works. Now, is it going to be faster? by six seconds. I like, you know, seeing these numbers go up. And there's the last one. Yeah, shut up, shut up. No, it's actually the same amount of time. Uh, all right. Now, is there a way to shave off a couple seconds? A couple commands, I mean, because what was it? Uh, optional challenges. We need 25 commands, so we are three over. I think the three commands over are probably gonna be in this area with these calculations which don't have to be there so let's say that this person is just gonna listen for i don't know goodbye it's the last level you know and once these uh, and once these people drop uh, the qbs they're gonna say goodbye oh but then we need to do two drop statements don't we oh that sucks how do i do that because we need to have that after the drop right or is there enough time for them to tell everyone goodbye? Drop the data cube before this person steps down. Let's see. So yeah, they're listening. Calculate. Right. Goodbye. Drop. Oh, there's a two. They managed in time. Four. Eight. Nice. This is going to be much faster for sure. Because there are no precious seconds wasted for this person before the button is actually pressed. Come on, let me see that optional challenge. So that might be actually both of the optional challenges, right? 24 and I forgot how many we needed. Yeah, goodbye, see you later. So 25, 24, nice. And let me, oh, what the shit? Are you kidding? So really in this game, tell and listen takes way too much time. You know what? Let's do something different. Once this person drops the data cube, that's your go time. Oh, but the data cube has been dropped for a while, hasn't it? Oh, you know what? We could pick it up straight after dropping, because it doesn't matter when the, when they pick it up, actually. Because when you look at the right number, of, you know, the number next to you, you should be able to read the data cube even if someone is holding that. So you're gonna be uh, looking at the this thingy. So if to the left of you there is a data cube, I think, or there isn't a data cube, you're gonna wait, right? So no data cube, keep waiting. And once they drop it, you're gonna see it and step down. And hopefully they won't have enough time to pick it up. All right, let's see. One, yeah, picked up. Put down, oh, zero, shit. So they picked it up before you could read it, right? And drop, press, wait, wait, what? This person wrote a zero. Whoa, why? I screwed up somewhere. How is that possible? So you still got one, and then you add a zero. What? In memory two? Oh, you're calculating the item you're standing on, but you should be calculating my item. So let's try again. Zero again. Four, zero. Okay. So this synchronization doesn't work. We need a different way to shave off six bloody seconds. What if we do it with an extra step? Here and... No, no, then, then this would be off again. They pick it up too fast. But if we put it here, then that's gonna be way too much time wasted and this person is gonna press the button multiple times, right? Yeah, I, I, I didn't even... Yeah, see, two, two, zero, that just doesn't work. So this is wrong. What if the rightmost person presses the button? I'm, I'm not sure. Is that gonna be faster? Well, maybe. So the button person just does the single 
button press and then we have an infinite loop here and once these people drop their data cubes they're gonna step diagonally down and back up which means that this person is gonna press the button one two four yeah it does work for sure i is it gonna be faster i i don't think so because we would ideally want these people to be already calculating while the button has been pressed but i just wonder you know how fast is this gonna be interested to know oh much slower all right last time trying with the goodbye listener and yeah i i, I just don't think i'm gonna be able to complete the optional speech challenge this time but there are sure gonna be some helpful hints on the youtube video and if i'm not gonna be called an idiot <laughs> in the last week's one i'm gonna be i'm not gonna be mad i'm gonna be disappointed but also happy because no one called me an idiot uh yeah no 16 seconds there's there's no way and what was this yeah five, five calculations but that was faster wasn't it I, I i think so yeah you know what i think i'm trying to optimize the wrong part of the code i think this is the space we should be optimizing since this lady at the you know last iteration doesn't take 16 seconds to press the button okay seven seconds yeah, it, it, it doesn't. She doesn't. So somewhere we're wasting time with these people doing all of this. I think we don't need the if statement since we have two if statements twice, basically. So we could calculate memory to our result first, and then we either set overflow to one and subtract uh, 10 from our result, or we set overflow to zero and waste time for those people who have an overflow. In that case, we don't need this if statement, which should theoretically save us a bunch of time. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got minus <laughs> uh, 1632,000 and someone blew up. How the shit did it happen? Let me speed this up. Two, four, eight, yeah, after eight, there's been an issue. How, how could there have been an issue? Oh, memory one larger than nine. Oh, so the two if statements weren't the same. Oh, shit. Uh, let me take a memory one. Yeah, memory two. I thought the if statements were the same, but there might be some, you know, correlation between them. So if I have 16 times 212 I need to yeah minus that but I don't have an overflow at the same time so I can't do this can I let's switch the operation of those two if statements and here we set memory one to zero or one and I don't think the set command takes any time but well, there's a lot happening here what if instead we say don't set it like that but say calculate memory two plus one if there has been an overflow and memory two plus zero with no overflow so we don't set we just calculate so this number should be the same no one blow up yes that's great and now this lady is gonna be too slow anyway we might have to speed her up since we've got one two three it, okay it worked but again that's this lady you know making it slow yeah that's the same time so the people might have been faster. So we maybe don't need those two steps. One, two, four, zero. No, shit. You know what? I don't know. I don't know. You, you, tell, you tell me. But I'm quite happy with myself. And I'm not going to spoil it just yet. But the level, goodbye humans. I'm going to save it for the next time. And it's not just a, you know, cutscene that's going to come here. So that might be a level when we finally enjoy killing some people and really have a task to kill people. That's gonna be fun.